Hey Mower Nuts, Mower Mike here at Texas HQ. Today we're going to talk about quick fixes for leaky mower tires. There's two things that I hate working on in this world. First is two-stroke motors. Second is fixing mower tires. They're a complete pain in the butt. So today we're going to go through some common quick fixes. I'll show you what I use most commonly, commonly to, to fix these things. Uh, and just as a note, yes, you can put a tube in any of these tires, but personally, I hate wrestling with tubes and tires. If you can do one of these quick fixes, it's much quicker and easier. So I'm going to walk through each one and when you would use each one. So the first is slime. So everybody knows slime. Now there's two types of tire slime. Now this one, it's meant for tubeless tires, tire sealant. Now there is one that has a tube sealant. Uh, most of your mower tires, unless they've been fixed already, do not have tubes in them. So, when would you want to use this? This is a rear tire off that John Deere LA145 I've been working on. Now, a lot of times, you're not going to be able to get these rear tires off those mowers because they're so frozen on. I got this one off with a lot of banging, as you saw in my video. Uh, but sometimes it's easier just to leave the tire on there in the wheel and fix it with it on the tractor. You can't pull them off to get a tube on them. So my most common fix is tire slime. When you can't find the exact hole and they're just leaking and it's driving you nuts, uh, I use tire slime. So the first step is you want to remove the valve stem. You know, tire slime thing comes with a little valve stem remover. They do work, but they're plastic. I like just going to AutoZone, a little $2 uh, valve stem tool, and you just take it out. Dude, I have wrestled with these so many times. And this tire slime trick, it works probably out of the 50 I've done, probably, I mean, at least over 50%. And if it doesn't work, then you just go to plan B, either try to get it off or, you know, just use a tube. So we get it out of there, let the air go out. And then next step, you get your slime bottle. You can see on the back here, it's got different levels. You know, I like to use more than what's recommended. This one says for an ATV tire, 24 ounce. This is a 24 ounce bottle. So I think we're just gonna go smoke the whole thing in here. And then you just hook your tire slime on there over the valve stem. And then you just squeeze it in there. And you just let it eat. I mean, just let it suck it all down. Uh, it comes in bigger bottles. You know, the bigger bottles are the best deal on Amazon because you can get them for $20. Uh, and they go much, much further. They're the ones with the actual pumps. This one's $10. I got it with Harbor Freight Tools. It works too, uh, but you just keep squeezing it in there. So you get all 24 ounces in there that you can get in there. As you can see, she's really sucking in that tire slime. This one, you know, it's had a real slow leak over the last month, and it's not one where I can pinpoint. I've looked all over and I can't find it. A lot of times I just slowly start leaking right here where the wheel slides up to it, to the tire and where it meets up. And this slime does wonderful results. I've sold a lot of mowers with lots of tire slime in them. Don't tell anybody that. All right. As you can see, we're getting to the bottom of the tire slime bottle. She sucked in all 48 ounces. This is definitely a good chugging tire. It might spill a little bit back out of there, but that's just going to seal up your valve stem a little better. And then you just get your tool in there and you twist it around. Now the next step is the most important part of using tire slime. You can't just let it sit in there. After you put it in there, you want to roll it around. So I like to roll it so it gets on the the edge of the rim there, roll it around, you know, just play with it like a big old dog toy, roll it around on the edge of the rim. Now, if you can't get this tire off the mower, if you can't get the wheel off, then I suggest just running it over your yard. Try to use a lot of variation in terrain so you get some different angles on it. That way it just coats the whole inside of that tire. You just want to get where all those little holes are and get it in there. Then you want to do this preferably before you actually air it up. But if you're running around, you got to air it up first. It really doesn't matter that much. All right, so I think we got a pretty good jiggle jaggle on it. And the next step, of course, is we're going to air it up. 
Now these are all pretty low pressure tires, so I just air it up. I don't do anything exact until it feels firm, but not for our cars. I have no exact lower tire. I see that it gets a little give, but not for our car. All right, so we'll come back to this one here in a couple days. We'll see how she does. All right, so the next product we're going to use is Fix a Flat. Fix a Flat goes way back, I think, to the 80s or 90s. Uh, actually trusted since 1970. So it's the original tire fixer upper, mainly used on auto tires, but you can use them on mower tires also. First step you want to do, you want to jerk it up and down for about 30 seconds. Get the good, good shaking up and mix around all the old, fix the flat in there. All right, that's good. And this one is just real simple. You take your little uh, fix a flat nozzle and we screw around the valve stem. Make sure it's nice and tight. And the can says you want to, if you can see the puncture, put it towards the bottom of the ground. So we'll say right there. And then you just take that nozzle, you rip off the safety tab. And then it says to hold it upright. And <laughs> you just let it eat. Now, this is one of the funnest ones. You just hold that nozzle down. This being a mower tire, it probably won't take the whole can, but well, she's what she wants if she's hungry enough. All right, we're getting some pressure in there. And you don't want to overpressurize it. You don't feel like you need to hold, use the whole dang thing to fix the flat. But you want to get it in there. You can see it's, it's still taking it here. Oh, we got some foam coming out the top. She is getting pretty excited here. So cool. See the fix the flat actually go in the freaking tire. Oh, whoa, 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 she's getting hard, so. Go ahead and take that off. That's some sticky stuff. All right, so we got to fix a flat in there, and I just kind of wiggle it around a little bit. Let the fix fit do its job. And we will see if that sucker holds there. All right. All right so the next option is tire plugs. Now, tire plugs work best when you can actually find the source of the leak. Now, the best way to find the source of the leak is to air it up with probably a little more air than you used to, and then use a spray bottle. Whoa, she's leaking like a geyser right there. Now, once you find the leak, I like to go ahead and mark it, usually just with a piece of chalk here. That's a leak. That's a huge leak. All right, so let's keep coming around. I hear more leaks in this sucker. Ah, oh, there's another one. See, you <laughs> see that sucker shooting water out. Holy cow, let's mark that one. This is all after one mowing, so I don't know if the neighborhood kid shot a shotgun at me or what's going on, but I have got some killer leaks in this sidewall. So, all right. Oh, I hear another one. Yep, there's another one right there. Also, you can put your finger on them feel them. So I've got three freaking leaks in this sidewall. So next we'll go ahead and show you how to fix these with tire patches. Now the first step of the tire patch is you take your reamer tool. And that's what this is. It's a sharp rough edge and you shove it into that that uh, where it's leaking from and you're essentially creating a spot for that plug to go. Now this is a highly aired up tire, so she's going to really pop when I pull this thing out. There we go. And you're essentially just making a spot for it. Shove it up and down in there. Make a little rough. Alright. So we got that sucker ringed out. Next you take the actual patch. It's a coming long strips of just gooey freaking material. Oh yeah. You get it off. You take that patch. Oh, it is Memorial Day tomorrow, so there are some serious fireworks out here in North Texas. <laughs> the bigger the firework, the bigger the man you are around here. All right, so you got to shove that. There we go. You shove it into the little patch holder tool. And what you, this is going to allow you to do is to shove that patch down into that hole you just you just made. So you want to push it about 
two thirds of the way in that hole you just made. There you go. And once it's in, you pull it straight out. There you go, and that patch gets stuck in there like so. And so that's a piece of tar or something sticky. And once it's in there, then you just go ahead and you snip it off. You wanna leave a little bit of that patch out, but you don't need all, the, all of it hanging out there like so. And that is how you do a tire patch. So next time we come around and do these other two holes right here, right here, and we'll go ahead and patch it up. And once you find your holes, we're gonna go ahead and put a tire patch in. Now the first step is you take your reamer tool, which is this guy, it's got the rough edges on the side, and you're essentially shove it into that hole that you found that you marked. This is gonna make the hole, prepare it for that patch. And it roughs up the edge of it to give that tire patch something to stick to. So you want to kind of shove it in and out of there a few times, like so. And then once you have that, you take your tire patch, and then you've got your little tool here that's got, a, it's got an eye on it. So just like a freaking sewing machine, you shove that gooey tire patch in there. I don't know what these are made of, some sort of snot mixed with tar. And you get it halfway in there, and then you're going to take this, and you're going to shove it in that hole you just made. It takes a little man strength. Get in there, woman strength. And we shove it in there about two thirds down. And once you get in in there, now you're just gonna rip it straight out. <laughs> that didn't work. All right. So that, that keeps it in there. So you're gonna see your tire patch is about a third of it sticking out. So that hole is patched. How freaking cool is that? You take your scissors, come across, kind of trim off that extra tire patch. Oh my gosh, that is some gooey stuff. So this is going to be a good freaking patch here, fellas. All right, now I see tires with 10 patches in them. I mean, you could just keep patching these things, especially on the sidewall. It's a great way to fix a tire if you know where the hole is. All right, so for the finale, we're going to do one a little different. I've seen this all over the YouTube. I've never actually tried it, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, what people are doing, they're using this insulation foam, essentially what's used on any doors, window sills, and they're replacing the air in the tires with these smaller tires with actual foam. So they would, in theory, never leak again. Uh, so what you do is you use a drill, probably a quarter inch, a little bigger. It really doesn't matter if you're not creating a seal. You're just trying to drill some holes in here, give you a place to Put your foam. So this tire, she's never going to see air again. I mean, this is a fully committed deal. This is just a little tire off a little Forrest Gump snapper lawnmower I got. So I'm really not concerned because these just leak a lot anyway. A total pain in the butt. So I'm going to go ahead with four holes in here. And then, I don't know, the guy on the internet said you put a little water in there. Because that foam likes to react with water. All right. So, with that, we're going to let her rip tater chip. See what happens here. Just shove that in there. <laughs> Whoa. All right. So, foam's going in there. It's definitely forcing air out the other. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, I feel it filling up with foam. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so the four other holes, uh, we got foam coming out, fellas. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have, I'm going to try to hold one of these holes in here. Uh, all right, so she's filling with foam. Uh, it's getting a little messy. I'm not quite sure how much foam we're supposed to put in there, but um, it looks like it's full of foam, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, okay, so I'm going to cut this off. We're going to come back tomorrow and see what this mess looks like. Hey, Mar, that's Mar Mike back here the next morning to see how our little tire experiment went overnight. Now, last night before I left, I put 15 PSI in each of these tires. Well, not that guy. That thing got weird. Uh, but just to go through each one, the big one here that we use the slime on, still holding 15 PSI. Seems like it's got a good seal. That's really my number one fix is tire slime. Next, next one, I fix a flat. She dropped the 12 PSI. 
you know, fix a flat, if you had it hanging around, I'd use it, but I'd always go to tire slime first. Uh, the tire patches work great. Held 15 PSI, didn't lose any pressure at all. So definitely if you can isolate the tire problem, the hole, I would go with the patches. Then I would go with the tire slime if you can't isolate it. And then I really wouldn't use the fix a flat unless you just got it hanging out. So let's move down here to our little experiment with the foam. Now the foam expanded quite a bit out of those holes. And when I feel the tire, I mean, the tire feels pretty firm. So just to, I guess you just peel off the foam patches here. I mean, it's weird. It's really awkward, but gosh dang it, guys. I think this might be my new go-to for small tires because it still has a little give, you know, but that dang tire, that thing's never going to go flat. And that foam's in there. <laughs> so guys, for small tires, you know, and this is the cheapest. These things are only $4. So I, I hate to admit it, I really didn't want to, but the, uh, the foam patch, you know, it's not going to work on a bigger tire like this, but maybe a front tire or, or just something like a little tire or even like a wheelbarrow tire could work out great. So anyways, leave me comments, uh, like or dislike. Tell me I'm an idiot, but I really had fun doing this, if anything. And I hope this helps. Please subscribe. I'm going to bust out another video or two every week about random mower fixes and things around the house. So mower Mike out.